Hello and welcome to lecture 15. Uh, if you're following the schedule, this should be the first class after the uh, fall break, so I hope you had a good break. As you can probably notice, I'm not in my regular office. I've moved to a different part of my house and uh, yeah, I'm gonna put a new background up for today. Uh, so today what we're going to be doing is looking at some applications uh, to what we've been talking about, basically matrix operations to computer graphics. So this material is based upon some of the material from chap chapter two at the end of the section. So the point of today's lecture is to kind of look at some connections between linear algebra and computer graphics. And as the example that we're going to use throughout today's class is we're going to look at one particular letter, the letter L, and we're going to treat it as a graphic. Okay, so let's make myself disappear here for a sec. Okay, so what we want to do is Think of the letter L as a graphic and how would a computer store the information about the letter L and then ways that it would plot the letter L. Okay, so when you think about the letter L, it's actually determined by six points or vertices and information about how the vertices are connected. So what are these six vertices? There's this point right here. One, two, three, four, five and six. So we have the six corners and then we need information about one is connected to two, two is connected to three and so on. So what you want to think about is you want to be able to plot each of these particular points and we want to establish for each particular point give it a coordinate. Okay so we can store that information inside of a matrix. So let me do that for you. So we'll call this matrix D and in the first row we'll put the x coordinate and in the second row, we will put the Y coordinate and we'll label our columns by which particular vertex that we're looking at. So here we have our vertex. So let's say that vertex one, we'll just put that in zero, zero. Then we have the point two, which is going to be one, zero. Uh, the third point, let's say we're gonna put it at one, zero point two, five. Four, we'll put at the point 0 0.25, 0 0.25. The point five will be at 0 0.25 and two. And the point six will be at the point zero two. Now what we would like to do is be able to take this information and plot it. And in fact, we can do this using Octave. And I wanted to show you how one might do this using Octave. So first let me grab the commands and I will over here, I will grab the commands and I'll explain the commands in a second. But let me just copy these and paste them into our file here and I'll make them a little bigger. Oops, can I resize this? It's not letting me resize this right now, that's okay. Um, oh, I do, let's go back to these guys right here. And so notice that A is corresponding to the first row and B is corresponding to the second row, but there's one extra little difference here is that we end up with a zero, zero. So let me point out what that is referring to. So the last column uh, goes back to the first spot, not splot, that would that'd be kind of silly. It would go to the first spot. And so we've stored the information here. And what we're going to ask Octave to do is plot A and B. So what it does is it takes A as your X coordinate, okay? And it takes the B spot as its Y coordinate. And what it does is it plots a line from XI yi, so think about it as a, that is the y -th column to the next column, xi plus one, yi plus one, okay? And this information over here is just simply the axes. So remember at the beginning, I said to plot the letter L, you need to know the coordinates and how it's connected. And so what we're doing here is we're just saying, okay, start at this point, move to this point then move to this point, move to this point, and so on. But then we also need to return to the point that we started at. Okay, so one more time, we go from one to two, two to three, three to four, and so on. 
So here are my Octave commands, and let's actually go over to Octave, and let's plot those commands in, and there we go, we have our letter L. Okay, so now we have the letter L stored as a graphic as a way to draw it. And then we can start thinking about, well, what sort of things do we normally do with our letter L? Okay, so here's a question I want you to think about and we'll talk about in the next part of our video is, how do you make an italic L? So the L information is already inputted. How do you take that information and make an italic L? Okay, I'll see you after the break.